What's up everybody? Welcome to the Guna channel, a channel 100% dedicated to the Arsenal, who as we all know are by far the greatest team the world has ever seen and it is of course also a burgeoning community. Now hopefully you're enjoying a restive, festive period. What I thought I'd do today is take a look at some of the best comments you've left in the month of December. That gives us a chance to discuss the incidents around it and there's some brilliant ideas in here and I've picked out my favourite, my top comment for the month of December. So Find yourself a relaxing place to sit or take us out on a stroll with you if you're one of those who likes to walk and listen. But in any case, I present you Comment of the Month. First one on the list uh, from early in December from the video that I put out, uh, which was Have Villa Killed Arsenal's Title Hopes? Obviously, I don't I didn't think and don't think they did. Um, but you do get a lot of people who just kind of read the title and leave a comment. I'm not sure if I'm being unfair to St. James Hawk 3861, who going forward will just be St. James Hawk. Um, we only have one on this channel so far. Now, he says, no one can claim that they've lost or won the title in December, dude. I'm a Liverpool fan, but I strongly believe the City is still a force to be reckoned with. Every team in a top six spot still has a chance to go for the title, even Man U. We're only 16 games into the season and we're 22 more to go. Anything could happen. Chill. Love him. <laughs> I, well, I am chill, to be honest with you. I am really chill and I'm even more chill after the game against Liverpool. Um, I think he's really sensible words. Now, I know it's uh, kind of, misinterpreting my message a little bit but um, I do agree that no one can claim to have won or lost the title in December and I still believe also that City are a force to be reckoned with of course they are I think you're absolutely right every team in a top six spot still has a chance to win the title I probably disagree with I think we're looking at um, I don't think Aston Villa have enough about them to go a whole season I think they'll have the same problems we did I don't think that uh, Liverpool will be able to cope without Mo Salah in January and they could experience a bump. You know, teams like Spurs and Brighton, I just don't see winning the title. So I think that it's between three teams now, Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal. And it is still too close to call. Thank you so much for your comment. From the same video, we've got V for Villain 9502 or V for Villain. Arsenal were the better team on the pitch. I notice I'm not doing it. Arsenal were the better team on the pitch. I'm not going to do the accent for this one. It's um, Arsenal were the better team on the pitch. Villa looked tired after the intensity of the midweek Man City game. I was surprised that we went with the same starting eleven. It was not a comfortable watch for me at all. And I just felt relief at the final whistle. Sure, you can argue individual decisions in any game. I do think that we got lucky. But then we were unlucky against Wolves and Bournemouth not to get key decisions our way. It's just the way it is. And VAR hasn't changed that. Have Villa killed Arsenal's title ambitions? No, not at all. It's between the current top four and it's just going to be a matter of who has the stronger squad. In my opinion, Arsenal lack the firepower to win the league. I would not want any of Jesus, Enketia or Havertz in the Villa squad. Anyway, good luck. See you again in April, UTV. Thank you so much. Great comments. Uh, again, a lot to agree with there. Starting off with Arsenal with the better team on a pitch. I think it's always great when you're a fan who can be as objective as that about it. I don't think there's any denying that we had the more you know the field tilt and we had the intensity but we just couldn't make it count I do think that Villa looked tired after the intensity of the midweek Man City game um, you were surprised you went with the same starting 11 I wasn't to be fair it was I can understand not a comfortable watch for Villa fans but it wasn't a great watch for Arsenal fans either um, maybe for the neutral sure you can argue individual decisions in any game I do think that we got lucky but then we were unlucky against Wolves and Bournemouth not to get key decisions our way I just think, you know, VAR is a problem for everyone. Like every, everywhere you look, people have a problem with it. And I see it hasn't fundamentally changed football. What it's changed about it is how we feel when decisions go against us, honestly, because we've had longer to look at them and make our mind up. And I know that you can't agree on every decision, but VAR seems to disagree with the vast majority of most football fans on in some of its decisions. That doesn't make sense. It's probably not the place to talk about it. Um, but have Villa killed Arsenal's title ambitions? No, not at all. Uh, it'll be between the current top four. So I agree with that. I, I, but I, again, I don't think it'll be four. I think it, Villa will not make it all the way through. It's going to be a matter of who has a stronger squad. And I don't think Villa are up there. But I also think they're going to struggle with the same sort of pressures that we did last season. And that's really difficult, uh, especially for a team that hasn't been near that yet. 
I mean, you have to give huge credit to Unai Emery for what he's done at Villa. There is something that does occur to me, though, and that is how is he going to deal with it if they have a few bad results? Because he looked really crestfallen after the Sheffield United game. He made a big deal out of how great the players had done, but I think he was disappointed. And they're, they're the sort of games that happen to teams when the pressure starts to, to set in. As I said, we know all about that as Arsenal fans. If Arsenal can't win it, then I would like to see Villa win it. I'd say that because um, Liverpool, that would be frightening um, that he could put a midfield together like that and go again. And with all the challenges they're going to face, I think that would be an enormous achievement by Jurgen Klopp. And I'm not saying he's beyond it. Uh, And no one wants to see Man City win four in a row, do they? Uh, So, yeah, great comment. Thank you very much. V for Villain. And now if you want a highbrow comment, you can always rely on East Stand Department. And he says, uh, as they say in Pentecostal circles, there just wasn't an anointing. Squad, Kivior needs minutes to sharpen up, so the jury's out on him. Eddie under the decking with him. Arteta is too stubborn in his selections. I do feel that, or I worry about that. I worry that Arteta is too stubborn in his selections. As for there just wasn't an anointing. I'm not familiar with that expression, um, but it's evocative and I think I know what it means. And um, I'm going to go and have to look that up. But Kivior needs minutes to sharpen up. I think I think it might take more than minutes with Kivior. I just don't think that Arteta has seen enough in him either. Physically, he is a fantastic defender. Um, Maybe he's having trouble with the tactical side of things and maybe it's just going to take him a bit longer. Alone, if that's the case, doesn't seem like a good idea. Maybe we will sell him, but I think we do need more cover before we even think about that. Those comments were from the video, have Villa killed Arsenal's title ambitions? And um, no, they haven't. And that's uh, something that I think we all kind of agreed on. Arsenal makes significant bid for next Neymar Brazilian wonder kid. Oh, that rhymes. I didn't even know that then. Um, genius. <laughs> Look at this. Co- this content is just genius. <laughs> video itself is about the speculation that since Santos have been relegated for the first time in their history, their Brazilian wonder kid striker, uh, Marcos Leonardo. And so the first comment is from uh, Boss Bubbler. Now, in the video, I go on to say that I'd really like to see us sign him. He looks brilliant. And so I ask a question in the comments. I'm excited by this. Are you? And Boss Bubbler says, of course I am. But it's with a question mark. So I guess it's, of course I am. But will Arteta go for him or is it just talk? Look, Edu is big in Brazil, so he should have no problem getting the player if he wants him. Come on, you gunners. Gunners for life. Um, And yeah, I'm excited. I mean, look, I don't know. Honestly, my gut is telling me we're probably not going to sign him, but I just wish we would. Because I think he would be the kind of unsettling player you throw in at the end of a season. And Edu does have huge pull in Brazil. The next comment um, is from Dynamite. And it says simply, lol, nobody wants to be the next Neymar, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. He is average at best and has done nothing for Brazil. If you're 30 and playing in Saudi, it's because you're not that good. Um, I don't know, you know, I think if you're 30 and playing in Saudi, it's because you're that rich. Um, I don't think they're being paid huge amounts of money because they're terrible footballers. But I actually replied to this one and... um, So my reply, I think, was pretty to the point. And it's, uh, yeah, what's he ever won except the Copa de Brazil, the Campeonato Paulista, the Copa Libertadores, the Copa Sudamericana, the La Liga, twice, Copa del Rey, three, three times, three or four times. So Super Copa de España, 2013, UEFA Champions League in 2015, the FIFA World Club Cup in 2015, Ligue 1, like three times, uh, five times. Uh, Coupe de France so many times uh, Coupe de Liga Trophy de Champion and FIFA Confederations Cup yeah so he's a terrible footballer um, thanks for being a bit mental see not all of the comments you get on this are great comments the next video was Arsenal need a striker rant rant in bold exclamation mark and all in capitals like I'm shouting it and it's basically me being triggered by the constant chat that we need a 20 goal a season striker to win the league it's the video is a rant it goes on about why i think that's absurd and who in fact this 20 goal a season striker is essentially one of the things that triggered me was people saying we need a 20 goal a season striker and i suddenly realized well it doesn't everyone i mean erling Haaland is one man city have one 
Um, Harry Kane was the only other one last season because I don't think that Ivan Tony scored 20 goals a season. I think he scored 19 because the goal he scored against us shouldn't have been allowed. But even if he is one of only three people who scored 20 goals a season, then surely at least 18 teams need a 20 goal a season striker. It's not just us. Um, but I got the comments, some of the comments I got, one of them I want to go over. Uh, oh, yeah, here's William Bergamo said, brilliant video, well articulated. And of course, I fundamentally agree with that. Um, <laughs> listen, it's shameless self-promotion, you know, if I don't do it. But um, I did just want to highlight Tia's new song, um, who to the title, What's the Hold Up? I wrote a comment saying, just sign a $20 a season striker, what's the hold up? And he wrote, the hold up is it's December. And, and I replied, I'm guessing you didn't get that I was being sarcastic. And he wrote, fair play, fair play. I'm just used to combating delusional fans. And I just want to touch on that because that's something that um, if you watch a lot of YouTube, and I do, and hopefully you will, <laughs> this channel first, it you, you get opinions which are hyper radical. They're not quite, you know, the normal uh, football fans experience of the game. Um, but that's what people click on. It's clickbaity. Even this video, you know, titling it rant. But um, essentially, delusional fans are just fans who seem to expect more than they're entitled to. Uh, loudest Arsenal fans are the ones that are angry with Arteta because he hasn't won us the Champions League yet. And But the massive fans are kind of they're pragmatic about it and they see that we've improved. And they've become quite defensive of the project, you know, trust the process. And I think I'm kind of in that camp a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think... We're kindred spirits in that, Teal's new son. Thank you so much for your comment. From the video, Arsenal to sell brightest talent. It's the video talking about Charlie Patino could be sold. Um, and I want to highlight this comment from Scott, the man from tomorrow, regular contributor to the channel. Basically, he ain't getting in the Arsenal team anytime soon. Good business, get him sold. Brutal. Brutal, but I think I agree, you know, and, and I it's just that question, isn't it? You just want to hold on. I'm a romantic. You want to hold on to Charlie Patino. But would he really get in the team? I think he's becoming an option. I think in the midfield we have right now, I don't think it would hurt to have him. I think he's somebody that could thrive around those kind of players. I don't know if we're ever going to see that. I do think that because he's a, a product of the academy, obviously you can... Just all of the money you get from transfers is money into nothing, basically. So, yeah, I think good business to do it. But um, I guess I'm just a bit more emotional than you. That was brutal. <laughs> so the next comments come from the final video I'm going to look at, which um, was the Arsenal's perfect January signing, question mark. So it should be Arsenal's perfect January signing. Anyway, um, I did a video in which I said that I would like to see us sign um, Ahmed Edic from Red Bull Salzburg. He's a versatile defender, playing at right back at the moment, two-footed. And, um, well, Red Bull Salzburg have a re great reputation for producing talent. I think he's just another one on the conveyor belt. Um, the responses were great. Red Eye Guna came back with, you know it and I know it, we're getting Kelvin Phillips. <laughs> Which, um, yeah, I'm not sure I'd hate it, to be honest with you. I... I don't think we are. Um, but yeah, Calvin Phillips. I prefer Amir Dedic to Calvin Phillips. I'll say that. And then there's a comment on here from uh, Scott, my brother, my actual brother, um, who, of whom I'm very proud. How about Patrick Schick? He is setting the world alight at Bayer Leverkusen and has the height target man build. Scored a very sublime hat trick the other night. Yeah, he's on a rich vein of form. Problem is, he never seems to play a full uh, season. And this is a purple patch for him. He has a great record over the last three, four years. Um, but again, I'm not sure that's a kind of... I, I absolutely get how we could have a play like that and change our play a little bit. But I think that's what you'd be doing. And I'm not 100% convinced on the goals he scored Um that he would be definitely the right player. But what a pick. Uh, absolutely someone that more people should be talking about. Definitely. Great comment. And then I think this is the comment of the month. Um, and I absolutely... I'm so grateful to Dark Cell Visual 297. Uh, again, you will forever be Dark Cell Visual to me. The only one. Um, Arsenal need to raid West Ham. Bowen has proven to be a perfect target man for West Ham as their striker. 
He had incredible link-up play with Rice being provided 16 assists from him over two seasons. Pakatar has a release clause of 68 million in January and having logged five assists in two games, he'd be a perfect 10 to connect the play between Saka and Martinelli. Then if we have leftovers, we should go in for either Kudos, who's difficult because he only just signed, or, and this is completely rogue shout, Kufal. He's out of contract in the summer. Every performance he's put in the season has been 7.3 plus, minus when they lost to Fulham 5-0. He's consistently starting over every other right back they have. He's pacey, can bait fouls, has an incredible cross on him, already providing five assists this season, second only to Trent Alexander-Arnold, putting him on a short-term contract, maybe two, three years when he has European experience and will only cost five to 10 million is shockingly good business. What a brilliant comment. Um, so I, I didn't know that about um, Pakatar. Obviously, I think Pakatar is a wonderful midfielder and recent performances just highlighting that. Um, and yeah, I absolutely can see him in that position instead of Kai Havertz to give you a bit more creativity. I think that one thing we're missing at the moment is that long ball, um, that sweeping pass, or somebody that can pick out a real pass um, creatively in that midfield. Odegaard's brilliant at it. Um, Kai Havertz is more of a play that you would expect to be in the end of something or just linking play. Um, I think it would be great to have them fighting out for the position. However, and I did some digging in this because, I, you know, you think a 68 million release clause, I, I do think I'd snap him up. But it turns out the release clause is actually 85 million and doesn't kick in till uh, June of next year. So the question would be, would West Ham accept a release clause they don't have to accept six months early? And I would say no. Would West Ham accept 85 million for him? I'm I'm not convinced. Um, Kudus, I just, I, yeah, they're not going to let him go. But he, yeah, he it was a surprise he went to West Ham. I think he did exactly the right thing. I think young players who really want to establish themselves go to teams like Brighton or West Ham. Um, and not to the Man Cities and the you know Man Uniteds because they get lost in that. Or at least I feel sorry for the ones that do go to Man United. Um, but Kufal, this is now I didn't look into this one, but he's out of contract in the summer apparently. Yeah, definitely, absolutely great. I mean, he's a huge upgrade on Cedric. That's how I would see it. We do need to go out and get some cover for the defense. And this is if they would let him go or if we made a significant bid, it could be done. Massive respect for that comment and um, the time and uh, you put into it as well was very much appreciated so there isn't a trophy for this but december's comment of the month uh, i award to dark cell visual for um this this idea that we should raid west ham i it, i mean could you do it though could you go in and take two or three of west ham's players we've just taken rice and i think we owe them we owe them 20 million for that really um let me know in the comments what you thought the best comment was, where you agreed or disagreed. And I just want to say thank you so much for your support. This channel wouldn't be possible without you. And I absolutely love making these videos and take a real steer on what to do from what you guys enjoy. So let me, keep letting me know. Thank you um, from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, whatever you're doing and however you're choosing to celebrate. Until I see you after Christmas. Be lucky! Lots of love. I wanted to say a special Merry Christmas to all of the Gunas this year. Top of Christmas again. It's becoming a Christmas tradition we could all be proud of. And I also wanted to say a special thank you to all the subscribers of the Guna channel. We will have found something extra special under the tree for you this year. What about all the Spurs fans? Do you have a message for them as well? Ho 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 ho!